Right, so it's not very often a Lib Dem says something remotely interesting enough to warrant paying attention to, but former Lib Dem leader Tim Farron, he whose only claims to fame are being remembered for believing gay sex is a sin, apparently offending his Christian values, publicly stating he had a photo of Margaret Thatcher on his bedroom wall as a child, which was just plain weird, and for being the only Lib Dem leader since the Tory Lib Dem coalition to have not been a former minister in that coalition. The current leader, Sir Ed Davey, yet another benighted party leader, another clear man of the people, not, was a former coalition energy minister, lest he ever be allowed to forget it. Farron's been hilariously idiotic on two fronts in the last week. It's amused me no end, so that's why I'm here talking about it. But the first of which was in response to a tweet by socialist activist Nadim Ahmed, where Nadim stated that four years ago today, this was on February 18th, Change UK was born. Today, not a single one of them is an MP. Farron's response was to quote tweet this, saying, I was critical of TIG slash Change UK, but all these guys did something most politicians fail ever to do. They put their careers at risk. More than that, because they couldn't stomach stuff that was wrong. I respect them highly. TIG, the independent group, as they called themselves before becoming Change UK, because irony, they represented nothing of the sort, was, some of you may remember, a short-lived political group consisting of a group of Labour MPs joining up with a group of Tory MPs, because they were basically all the same because the Tory ones felt they were becoming too extreme and harming the future of the capitalism their party had stood for. No kidding. And the Labour ones disagreed with Corbyn threatening to bring down capitalism. Change UK was functionally to preserve capitalism in which case, therefore being anything but about change. They rapidly became nicknamed the Funny Tinge Party anyway after a racist gaffe by former Labour MP and ardent Corbyn basher Angela Smith, who had a mayor of an interview on the BBC. Farron respects them highly, apparently, not least of which because several joined the Lib Dems before the 2019 general election after their little movement, the political equivalent of a bowel movement, frankly, failed, and they all ended up losing their seats, if they stood again at all. The Lib Dems welcomed a bunch of disaster capitalists, fundamentally. It might shed a bit of light on Farron's other gap, which I'll come to presently. It's worth going into what has become of each of those MPs since, actually, as it shows why their departure from Parliament has been absolutely no great loss whatsoever. But that'll have to keep for another time. These people helped keep the Tories in power, though. They tried to be a new gang of four, the founders of today's Liberal Democrats, of course. So there's two reasons Farron would be attracted to them. But they also helped to usher in the hard Brexit we ended up with, were instrumental in bringing about the hardship we're living through now. Unspeakable suffering, the continued erosion of our essential services, made all the more abundantly clear due to their mishandling of the pandemic, the abuses by government figures they helped stay in power, failing the public so much it's just surprised nobody was seeing so much strike action up and down the country now. But you do you, Tim. You keep respecting them highly. His second example of idiocy came yesterday in an interview on Murdoch Radio, Times Radio, that truly liberal-minded institution, of course, where he decided to rave maniacally that it's okay for Marxists to bring what they've learned from Das Capital into the room, but not to take what you've learned from the Bible and ask the question, that's nonsense, isn't it? Not really, Tim. I was brought up in a, well, I wouldn't say devout, but certainly religious Church of England family, so I take a little care in how I talk about such things, lest I give my mother a turn. But here we have a man we know to be devoutly religious in Tim Farron, with his beliefs on gay sex and towards homosexuality well documented, and not being particularly liberal, really, comparing a work of political analysis of data research, a critique of capitalism, which is what Das Capital is, which we all know is failing this country, whether you choose to identify with Marx or not, with what some might argue to be a work of fiction in the Bible, a direction my family knows I lean towards, though I absolutely respect their right to their beliefs as I do anybody of faith. People of faith are allowed to let their beliefs affect their politics, he reckons. He says this is only right, but I would argue if your faith predetermines your views towards certain policy issues, such as gay rights, then you shouldn't be in a position to make laws relating to that. Predetermination versus predisposition is politics 101. Your predisposition is your own. You're absolutely entitled to that. But if you let that encroach on your decision-making capacity, particularly when it affects your ability to be utterly impartial, and parents claim that nobody is, is an insult to every politician from local to national across this country who strives to be just that then you're predetermined and you have no place in making decisions based upon that. The way Farron bleated on, you'd think those of a religious persuasion were being purged or banished beyond sight like some collective version of Father Ted. Farron's argument is that none of us are neutral, that we all have beliefs in something that shape our thinking and our politics, which is 
fine and good and great and true. And people should be elected based on those beliefs being known in advance. Sure, it's the stuff that goes on in campaign literature and the like. But your argument is completely undermined when you claim people of Marxist political beliefs are allowed to be listened to, but you as a religious man are not. It's not true. You can challenge Marxism just as you can challenge capitalism or fascism or any other number of political isms. But just because Farron is being held to account for his based on his faith doesn't make him a victim of persecution as he's trying to make out. Political viewpoints shouldn't get a pass on being held to scrutiny, but neither should religious convictions on the same basis. It's patronizing bull. In 2000 years, we may have people worshipping SpongeBob SquarePants, for all we know, championing a housing crisis by building pineapples under the sea, perhaps. This is a stupid example, of course, but if it's a belief, it's a belief. That said, we actually know more about the authors of SpongeBob scripts than we do about who wrote the Bible. I'm going down a really weird hole now, aren't I? Uh, let's get back on track a little bit. Fundamentally, your beliefs, be they political or religious, should be scrutinized in the political arena. There should be no free pass for that when your decisions affect others, as Farron seems to think his Christian values entitle him to. If you don't like it, stop being a politician. 